We have just sold our seven-figure print-on-demand brand. In fact, here's the press release from OpenStore to prove it. This is a brand that we ran for just over two years and had done a couple million dollars in sales. And in this video, I'm going to take you through the exact process that we used to go from the idea to ultimately an exit. And everything in between, it was a pretty wild ride. But first off, let's take a deeper look at the press release. So here you can see OpenStore is noting that they just acquired History Tees, which was the name of the brand. And further down, they talk about how they also acquired Yoga Stay from myself and my other business partner a couple of years ago. And the exciting thing about this and the reason that you should care is that I use the exact same strategy for both. They are essentially the same business, just in different niches. And so if you've ever considered starting a print-on-demand business or an e-commerce business in general, you're certainly going to want to watch this all the way to the very end because we're going to be breaking down the exact details, the ins and outs, how we make our products, how much money we needed to get started, how much profit the business was actually making, and then ultimately how we made the decision to get acquired. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Ekman. I've done over $25 million in e-commerce sales. I've been doing this for the better part of a decade. So this is not some like, oh, look at me, I'm brand new at this and just so happen to make a million dollar store like it's rinse and repeat it's a very repeatable process and i made a lot of mistakes along the way that's why i make content like these so hopefully you can avoid some of those on your own path and before we get into all the down and dirty details let's get a quick background on the business model so if you're not familiar with print on demand the reason that we choose print on demand and Shopify specifically is for a number of reasons. When you start a new business, there's a couple of main things that you want to be able to prioritize or evaluate in making your decision of which path is best for you. First off is the amount of capital required. Second is competition, and these are in no particular order. Third is the amount of time that it requires. And fourth is the learning curve. And oh, and the fifth one is like the longevity or LTV of the brand. And like, can we build it into a real business? And it's not just, you know, drop shipping where it's like spikes and dips and you might go viral for a couple of days, but then you're sitting there with nothing. So all of those reasons bring us to print on demand as a really good option because we use a company called Printify, which prints, packs, and ships all of our products for us. And we're able to differentiate ourselves compared to standard drop shipping because we're able to create our own designs. We're not just taking products from Alibaba or wherever and selling the same crap to everybody. We're able to really brand it and make it a unique product that people haven't seen anywhere else. And then along that same line, we're able to make it a customer experience that they want to come back and buy from again and again, which leads to LTV returning customer rate, which you'll never see on like a drop shipping business. Yeah, anywhere from 15 to 25% of our revenue comes from people loving us the first time around and coming back time and time again, which is insanely valuable. By the way, is if you don't have that, it's almost impossible to get acquired because no potential acquirer is going to want a business that has a return customer rate of zero. And so it's print on demand, primarily like 90 plus percent t-shirts. And the reason we do t-shirts rather than, you know, wall art, canvases, mugs, whatever, is because a number of reasons. And most importantly, t-shirts is the number one print on demand product in the world. Everybody has 10, 20, 30 t-shirts in their closet. It's extremely giftable. People wear through it. It's very easy to ship and the margins are a lot better than on some other print on demand products. And it's also a product that's within the impulse buy price range. As soon as you get up into the 50, 75, 100, plus dollar products it's a little bit tougher to sell certainly still possible but with t-shirts we're able to sell them at you know mid 20s and have a really high conversion rate so those are some of the reasons why we choose the model in the background for print on demand specifically and then with on shopify you know there's print on demand for etsy merch by amazon all of those the reason we do shopify specifically and then i personally believe it's the best at least in my experience is that it is the only platform that allows you to build a real business etsy sellers amazon nothing against you guys but etsy and amazon they are your business so even if you're doing a million dollars a year on etsy that's amazing you're making great cash flow what happens if etsy wakes up tomorrow and decides to ban your account your business is gone look at me sure i'm the captain now and that's not a hypothetical scenario that has literally happened to sellers they are doing like consistent sales 
making revenue, feels like they're making traction, then just overnight, one thing changes and Etsy makes their whole business go away. The reason it's different on Shopify is that Shopify is not a marketplace. Shopify is a tool for building your website. Etsy and Amazon, they are marketplaces. You are going there, you are beholden to them. Shopify, it's literally like Legos for an e-commerce website builder. So like you don't get banned by Shopify unless you're doing something like blatantly illegal or like ripping off somebody's products. But even there, if you get banned by Shopify, you still have the email list, you have the customer data, you have your social media followings, you have your all your pixel data, and you're able to say Shopify kicks you off for any reason, you're able to go to Wix the next day and you're right back up and running. So that's why we choose print on man and specifically on Shopify. And in my opinion, it's an amazing business model. That's why I've been doing <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. I've been doing it for years and it works. So now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the brand. So we started History Tees a couple of years ago and it was based on a simple premise of we had somebody we were working with who was a big fan of history and we thought, is there a way that we could take their passion and turn it into something profitable? And the medium that we chose to do that was with t-shirts, print on man for all the reasons that I described. And even though the, the site looks like it has a lot going on, it's really, you could break it down into very simple components. We have a high converting website, which is very simple. Like it just checks the boxes of like everything that a shopper needs to see. And if you're confused about any of these points or you wanna learn how to do this, we have a 21 hour course that is completely free, literally on our YouTube channel, I'll link it down below. But for now, just. You can follow along with the case study. And when we launch these stores, we have about 50 to 75-ish products. And what I mean by products is it's just the design that you see on the t-shirts here. And we create these mock-ups. We don't just use the Printify or Printful default like white background because those don't convert as well. And we start off with 50 to 75 and we try to do a wide variety. So we didn't just do like humorous, you know, history stuff right out of the gate. We did a little bit of everything. So we weren't sure what people were gonna like. And in doing so, we had like five or 10 that were humor based. We had five to 10 that were, you know, like women's history, five to 10 for like different times in history. Some that were just pictures or aesthetics that we thought looked nice. And after we move on to the second stage, of, we make those 50 to 75 designs using primarily AI. Like you can use nowadays, we would do primarily AI. Back when we started this AI, it wasn't really a thing. So we hired designers, but nowadays you can make a lot of designs just like these using like Mid Journey, Ideogram, Mystic, which is a software that we're building. Any of those tools work. And then once you have those designs, you launch very basic testing ads. So we use Facebook to drive our traffic and we use a very low budget of like 50 bucks a day to get started. And what we found relatively quickly was that we had one design that was a clear standout winner. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking to see out of the whole collection of designs, is there one that really stands out? And then we don't stop there and like just kind of rest on it. We double and triple down and make as many more designs up that alley as possible. So after we saw one of the humor-based designs was really taking off, we then, like I said, doubled down and created a whole collection around that similar concept of just taking historical events, applying humor to it. And part of the reason that this did extremely well was the amount of engagement that we were getting in the ads was absolutely insane because this brand in particular was right in the polarizing space of like some people are saying like oh it's too soon some people are saying it's not soon enough <laughs> and they would just comment back and forth and go at it and that would really spur the facebook algorithm to give us additional reach basically for free which lowered cpms cost per thousand impressions that's what that means which leads to cheaper traffic at the end of the day that's pretty much it like we 50 to 75 designs facebook ads did email marketing a little bit. We didn't even do a ton, but we used Klaviyo for that. And then we did a little bit of Google retargeting. And that was pretty much the playbook of just rinse and repeat, see what designs are selling well, make more like it, and that's it. Using Printify to fulfill all the orders. And like there was lots of other backend things that were important, like running consistent financials to make sure we were on top of all of our expenses. Really good customer service that people loved that would get them to want to come back and buy from us again. And building out like a brand that was history related it didn't just feel like you know a stock t-shirt stores so that looked like customizing the thank you and confirmation emails so that it wasn't just like thanks we got your order it was written in like a historical like tone of voice like 18th century english picture and 
people absolutely love that and it's those little like nuances and like honestly it's the simple stuff that really made the brand special and like stand out in people's minds but to get started it was just 50 to 75 different designs on t-shirts printify with facebook ads and all the details are laid out in the 21 hour course But on that note, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which was after we ran it for about a year and we had done a little over a million dollars in sales, which by the way, doing a million dollars in sales right out of the gate is not the norm and doesn't need to be. Honestly, there was a lot of luck involved with us stumbling upon like creating a design that it just took off right out of the gate. Normally it takes a lot more design testing to find that those winners. So don't take this as like, I don't want this to be like the Instagram model of uh like this seems all glossy and stuff but actually it's got a bunch of filters on it so it makes it it seem like your business is less than like it takes work and i don't want to make this seem overly simple because it is freaking hard there are like a lot of challenges with this business i'm just trying to simplify it down so that it, it's clear that it's like this is what it is and like nothing more you can kind of hone in but like there are a lot of challenges and like creating those first 50 to 75 designs what if you don't find a winner there then you make another 50 to 75 what if you don't find a winner there and you move on to the next like it can be like a very grueling process to get to that first winning batch of designs it normally takes like two to three iterations and that's where a lot of the challenge comes in so i don't want to make it this at all seem overly simple but anyway so a little over a year we started talking with open store and open store at the time they were primarily known for making acquisitions of comp of e-commerce companies but they had actually just started something brand new called their open store drive program and the drive program what it is 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 instead of acquiring the business and taking it over outright, like you're no longer the owner, right? What they'll do is they evaluate your business the same as, and open store is great, but just by as a quick aside, like I worked with them on Yoga State, they are by the book, like extremely fast. If you have a Shopify store and you're considering selling it, open store is one route I would definitely uh, consider they're so fast with the offers. It's something you can actually count on. And take it from me, having gone through multiple business sales, it's not something to be understated, the simplicity that they offer. But anyway, so they were offering the drive program where basically they take over the business for 12 months and they give you a guaranteed like monthly like profit. They take it over and run everything and they'll grow the business. And then at the end of the 12 months, they will either make an offer to acquire, give an offer to re-up for another year or still your business. You can just take it back over. And so that's what we decided to do. So we did the drive program. They took over running all operations of the business. And throughout that time, they really grew it in a lot of different ways. Like they were doing a lot with the email marketing. They had their entire team and they have like a portfolio of companies that of e-commerce companies that they're learning and applying best practices across the board. So when they take over a brand like History Tees, they have a playbook they're able, that they're able to immediately implement and take the brand from like here to there. At least this is my own experience. And after a couple of months of them running it, we saw that they were like really starting to pick up the pace with things to the point that in December, they had a monstrous month compared to, I think it was up like 150% from our previous December, which was crazy. And when we saw that, we're like, all right, this brand is gonna become like a behemoth under them and they're clearly doing very well with it. So when it came time to, for like the end of the program, we decided that, you know, we had a conversation with them. It was like, either we can take it back over or acquire it. And we decided at that point, like from the brand perspective, first off, like it's in great hands. Like it's going to continue to grow. So like check that box. Like I already know open store. I've worked with them in the past. They've been great. But then for us personally, a lot of people have asked like in our school community, like if you're making a multiple of that business sale, like why not just continue to run it for one, two, three years? And make that up and the fact of the matter is you certainly can do that you we could have continued to run it but there's a lot of benefit in my mind one in knowing that it's in good hands but two being able to take capital off the table and like reinvest it in whatever next project you have planned and there's also the opportunity cost of while you're running the brand like what else could you be spending that time on i think a big factor that open store takes off the table is that we didn't have to worry about like is this somebody good to be getting into business with do we have to worry about you know earn out clauses and stuff down the road that are going to come back to bite us and since i could say from personal experience i had to deal with none of that on yoga stay i knew that they were a great company to work with yeah we ultimately made the decision to sell and 
They have now taken it over and we are free to do what we want. And overall, if you take anything from this video, take the fact that it is 100% possible to build and sell a print on demand brand. I've never heard of somebody doing that with like an Etsy print on demand brand or an Amazon brand, but with Shopify print on demand, you absolutely can like build it to sell if that's your ultimate goal. You're not building a print on demand store. You're building a legitimate brand. You just so happen to start off selling t-shirts and rather than being an idiot and ordering a bunch of inventory of t-shirts because there's a thousand SKUs you'd have to order. It would be like unsustainable from an economic standpoint. You use print on demand because it allows you to be nimble, to test a lot of different designs, to find the winners. Like imagine if we had our first collection of 50, 75 designs and if we decide to order inventory for all of them and that's how we were fulfilling. That'd be like moronic. <laughs> that would make no sense. We would have wasted tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to stock up sufficiently. And then we would have only only had one or two that really sold in the beginning one or two designs with like you know 10 out of 100 SKUs on each design it would make no sense so bring it back to Shopify you're building an actual brand you just so happen to use print on demand to start off fulfilling your products and you can expand from there like now open store can expand into history canvases wall art mugs phone case, like all kinds of different products if they just use the t-shirts as like a foothold into the industry now they build a massive customer list they like know what kinds of concepts and themes sell well i guess bringing a full circle is just that print on demand is great on shopify but you never have to think about it as like oh i have a print on demand t-shirt store it's like no you're building a brand it's just in its early stages and anything in its early stages does not look like you know a massive warehouse with all kinds of products and a massive supply chain because that wouldn't be sustainable yeah anyway hopefully you found this helpful and if you have any questions comment down below i'm happy to answer them and more importantly if you're interested in learning the more of the specifics about how to build a brand like history tees feel free to click the link in the description below to check out the 21 hour course and also join our school community we're in there doing group calls and that sort of thing links down below for that as well and other than that Appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you soon.